Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting these loose sweet peas um, and as those of you who are regulars to my channel know that I've been over the past year trying to every now and again um, try painting loose flowers and to be honest, I find them quite tricky. It's quite difficult. It's something that's completely different to the kind of landscape painting that I normally do and that I started painting about four years ago. So every time I try the flower painting, it feels like I'm sort of a beginner at watercolours all over again, which is quite interesting, but a little bit nerve wracking too. Um, today, I'm, I'm not following any particular photographs for reference but I looked at quite a few pictures of sweet peas um, on Pixabay and I then drew out some sort of fairly careful sketches onto the paper so I got the shapes right. Now I'm finding more and more with um, loose flower painting that no matter how loose the painting actually is itself, Initially, I think that the details of the flowers themselves have to be reasonably accurate. Um, so I think it's well worth taking a little bit of time um, looking at your reference and making sure that you've got the right kind of shape that you manage to put onto the paper in your sketch what it is that makes that flower unique. With sweet peas, they're very delicate and they've got a very unique sort of fairly frilly shape and they're very dainty. Um, so almost orchid-like in their shape in some ways. So I tried to get that across in my sketch first. I'm using hot pressed paper today and hot pressed paper is I think really lovely for botanicals because it's so smooth the paint sort of and the water glides over the surface and gives you beautiful soft transitions um, but you can also get some nice sort of hard edges and some de crisp detail too um, so that's why i like to use um, cold press paper uh, sorry hot press paper for my flower paintings this is Saunders Waterford. It's a natural white, which is a very creamy colour. And to be honest, I think I should be using the high white, which is a purer, brighter white for my flower paintings. <coughs> Excuse me. And I probably will in future because I do think that the creamy look here takes away from some of my colours and sort of distracts from some of the purity of the colours too. I think I'd be happier painting on a much whiter background. So um, I think I'm going to be using high white in future. Sadly, it's a little bit more expensive than this creamy Saunders Waterford um, natural white paper, but the natural white paper is certainly good to practice on. So I've started off um, with my board flat for this flower painting. Usually I have it tilted at an angle of about 45 degrees for landscape painting. But I've found that for starting off the washes for flower painting, I like to have my board flat so that the washes sort of pool into the water and sort of more or less stay where I put them. So what I did here is with my, um, my paper taped to my board and my board flat, is I used a water misting spray, the type that hairdressers use that gives a lovely soft mist. And I misted my paper all over so that I got some parts wet, some parts dry, but a nice soft sheen on the paper. And as you can see, I'm just using a small synthetic Polina Bright round brush to drop in color here and there over and around where I've drawn in my sweet peas. I'm going to be using a limited palette here. At the moment, I'm trying to keep it to three colors for this, and that's um, Opera Rose, Ultramarine Blue to mix with the Opera Rose to give me some sort of mauve colors, and um, Sap Green. I think a bit later I should probably use some violet as well because that will give me some slightly deeper, darker shadows, I think. 
so I think this underpainting is nearly done and you can see how the pinks and the mauves and the greens are all sort of running into each other while staying sort of loosely defined as the flower shapes, stem shapes and leaf shapes. Um, I'm spattering on some drops of the paint as well, which helps to diffuse and soften and give a sort of a dreamy sort of complex feel to the painting as well. That will all just diffuse and soften because as you can see, my paper is very, very wet now. So now I'll leave it to dry completely. So that first layer has dried and I'm sorry for the change in light. Um, this is artificial light now, so the painting itself is a lot brighter and also just a lot fresher looking than this light shows. So I've painted on my loose background detail. Now I'm going to be applying some more detail to the flowers, just a little bit, enough detail and dark to define the flowers a little bit more. Um, I think it's very important to stress that when you're doing loose painting, whether it's a landscape or florals or, or probably portraits, although I'm not experienced with portraits at all, with any kind of loose painting, planning your painting first is really important, but also being able to use just a few small details and accents, crisp ones, harder edged ones, um, wet onto dry painting um, will really bring out and focus um, and make your loose painting far more realistic so that it really does suggest what you're trying to say but in a very loose way. I hope that makes sense. Um, I mean, if I'd left things really loose and blurry, um, as in this painting, the underpainting here, it's very pretty, but it's a little bit wishy-washy, shall we say. And it's not just because it's pale, it's because there's no definition there. It was all done wet in wet, deliberately, to get these beautiful misty um, trans transitions um, and passages across the paper. Um, this brush is a, let me just have a look, it's an Escoda Ultimo size 14 synthetic brush and it's lovely for um, softening out large areas or wetting them and then dropping paint in. It's got a lovely point as well. Um, this is my small unbranded calligraphy brush. Any small round brush will do. It doesn't have to be the same as this. Um, and it's just using that with the sap green to drag down those delicate stems. While the paint is wet, the violet paint that I've been putting in to darken up and define my sweet peas. I'm being very careful to keep these stems ever so thin. So broken lines here and there, I don't need them to sort of continue. I'm just keeping this very, very loose um, and as fresh as I can, and I'll continue across the rest of the page um, doing exactly the same. If the water pulls up a bit too much, you can just dab it off lightly and carefully with a tissue so that you don't smudge it. So here you can see I've gone across the rest of the painting and now it's back to um, the Polina Bright round brush, the number one synthetic round, and the sap green, and to put in some slightly more defined um, leaf shapes and things like that. And sometimes you can, if you want to soften things back a bit more, when you're putting in your detail with flowers, if it's a little bit too harsh, then you can, of course, use your fine misting spray and that will help the paint to diffuse and run a bit more. And I should have said I'm painting at a 45 degree angle now so that gravity is kind of bringing the paint down the wet areas um, towards the bottom of each motif like the leaves and the flowers and as it pulls up there it creates that kind of darker shadowiness near the near the base of the flower which is quite natural because the light generally is coming in from above. This is only um, an abbreviated version of um, the process. Um, if you want to see a fuller 
version and a two-part tutorial complete with reference photographs and more in-depth um, teaching of the various stages, then take a look at my Patreon link below. But please bear in mind that it's nearly the end of the month and it's probably best to wait until the 1st of March to join because if you join now you'll be charged then you'll be charged again on the 1st of the month. Um, but if you're interested in more in-depth tutorials then please um, follow the link below. I think I'm nearly there now so I shall take my store card and using the rounded corner I'm going to scrape through the moist paint moving it around very slightly sort of revealing lighter areas and darker areas where the paint pulls up around the marks and this helps me to sort of push the paint around and define individual petals a little bit more and maybe even to define some sort of folds in the petals and little veins and that sort of thing. So I'm just about finished now and for a final touch I'm going to use my Polina Bright and an inky consistency mixture of various colours and just spatter onto the painting where it hits the, the wet flowers it will soften and diffuse, where it hits the dry paper I'll get these little speckles that will um, just blend in and look lovely against the softer, smudgier marks that I created in the underpainting um, with spattering into the wet in wet painting. And as you can see, I've um, laid my board flat again for the spattering so that I keep the shape and definition to my little tiny um, spattered freckles. So I'm going to call that finished and what I'll do is uh, once it's dry I'll remove the masking tape and take a quick look at it. Seeing it without the tape helps me to see it with fresh eyes so I can assess whether it's finished or, or not. Um, and I'm quite happy how it's turned out. Um, I like the balance between soft and hard edges. Um, there's areas that I'm not keen on. I'm wondering whether I should put some darker shadows in, maybe with some Payne's Grey, just to define certain areas a bit more. But as I'm learning, I am always think it's best to leave a painting where you like it, um, or just before you think it's finished, and then to step away from it, and then move on to the next painting. Because if I was to continue painting on this, I risk overworking it, which I don't want to do. I'd rather take lessons that I've learned from this painting and put them into practice in a fresh one. So I hope this was helpful, and thank you so much for watching. Please um, leave us a like and subscribe to, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you click on the bell icon, you'll be notified whenever I uh, post a new video, which is sort of two or three times a week. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.